The following video is supported by partners and associates of Joy Christian Ministries. Bible up, say this with me. God's holy word. God's holy word. I believe it. I believe it. By His grace, by his grace and, his strength, and His strength, I will practice, I will practice it. it. Now, you know, He gives us grace and He gives us strength, but it's up to us to practice it. In we, yes. we've got to put it in force. We got to. Yes, amen. We got to. Yeah, otherwise, it's just so many words. Uh, but uh, those words will, are costly if they're not adhered to. Because it's not just so many words, even though the world might think that. It is God's holy word. And did you know that we will be judged by what God says? Amen. Not what people think or what they talk about. It's going to be by the word of God the way we're judged. Mm -hmm. And so I want to comply to God's word. Will you say amen? amen? amen. All right. Which road are you living on? Which road are you today living on? We're talking about two different roads here. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, just a couple of verses here that Jesus is, is talking. Matthew chapter 7, we'll, we'll be in, in Psalms and Matthew, we'll be in Joshua, we'll be in St. John, just a, four or five places today. Uh, but which, which road are, are you living on? Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, pretty easy to find today. Verse 13, Jesus is talking here and he says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. In another passage of scripture, he said, Broad is the way that leads to destruction. So that's a road that people travel on that are lost. Which road are you traveling? Are you traveling on the life road? They both start with L, but they have totally different meanings. Life or lost. Which road are you traveling on today? And you know by your own witness. And did you know that God knows too how you're living? Hello? Amen. Either say amen or oh me, whichever fits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Verse 21. That's, that's pretty plain stuff, isn't it? Yes. Woo! I don't think Jesus is getting any plainer than that. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. You know, the Word of God says, be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Amen. You know, some Amen. folks come to this church, they come to a lot of places, I don't know if they're hearing what they need to be hearing, but I know what I, we bring the Word of God here. Um, we're not the only ones that do, mm -hmm. but we know what we do here. Okay. But there are many folks that hear the Word of God and just goes right on through mm -hmm. and finds no lodging place. Mm -hmm. but they're not doers of the Word. But we're not to be just hearing the Word. We're to operate as God wants us to live. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're, we're operating on the road of life when we operate. That. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. I'll get back to this at St. John. I got there a little early, but it's so good. And you might have it more abundantly. Better life. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm, verse 1, I'm sorry. Way back, about the middle of the Bible. And Psalms, you usually turn about to the middle of about any Bible, you're pretty fine in Psalms pretty quick. The first Psalm in, in Psalms, turn there and, and we're going to look at this. He's talking about two different lifestyles here. Talking about two different roads. Now, this word blessed, it could be changed to happy. And that word could and many times be converted to the word happy. But blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf 
also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. How many of you like to prosper? You like to prosper? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, any any fool can go broke, right? You just, just sit on your haunches somewhere and just go broke. But God wants us to prosper. Say prosper. 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 In fact, uh, 3 John 2 says, Beloved, meaning the Christian child of God, I wish above all else that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So he's saying, if your soul prospers, your body's going to come along. Right. You know, a lot of people are, are soul sick and that's why they get sick in their bodies. Amen. You'd be amazed if they get their soul right how fast their body would heal up. Right. I mean, God is a healing God. He cares about us. Amen. Yes. Yes. He says, no, you're not that your body is the temple yes. of the Holy Ghost. As a child of God, that's what that's what your body is. That's why we're to take care of our bodies. We're to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which the Bible says is our reasonable service. How many knows God just asks reasonable things of us? Amen. Amen. He's not an unreasonable God. I mean, we can live for God if we choose to. Yes. And if we will. Amen. If we remember, if we will, He will. Amen. I, I can't say that enough, but I say it every once in a while because it's so true. All we have to do is will to serve God and he will will to love us into the kingdom of God save us protect us heal us deliver us whatever our need is he's there to provide Amen. that's one of his names Jehovah Jireh my provider remember where God guides he provides doesn't he I was telling somebody I got to report this to my the president of our our organization which I'm a member of we are, uh, this church is local, uh, just a local non-denominational church as a body we are. But Jan, Pastor Jan and I, personally, we belong to the American Evangelical Christian Churches. Uh, and we're, we're ordained through that ministry, at, which started in 1944. So it, it's been over about 76 years old, the, the, the ministry is. But I was telling George, our president of our, uh, I'll tell you, God is a God that saves Strange people sometimes. George is one of them. I, he's such a dear brother. George is a black brother that, that's from the West Coast. George spent 24 years in San Quentin. And he wasn't a chaplain there. <laughs> he was in prison. But well, while George was in prison, he, he, God dealt with him, brought him along, got saved, put himself to study. I don't know how many degrees Brother George has, several. Very intelligent brother. Educated himself while he was there. And in the last several years of, of his sentence, when he, when he was able to get out, he was ministering to at least 400 inmates every week in a Bible study where he was ministering to them, preaching to them, and seeing them saved. Some of our... But I told you all that to tell you this. George was born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, on fire for God, loves God with all of his heart. And God spoke, our denomination was the first ones that went to San Quentin was able to water baptize anybody in that prison. First time they have ever baptized anybody in that prison. So George, uh, they, he got hooked up. He's ordained with our ministry now. He's been with our ministry a few years now. Him and his wife, Jamie. Beautiful couple. We just love them. But I was telling George about our tent meeting. We were talking about our tent meeting and telling him how it went and everything and told him how God provided the finances. And I've already said this once, but I just mind so, I don't mind saying it again. How God provided. It was God. The whole deal was God. I mean, we're a small group, okay? I, I, and when God spoke to me several months back to do have that 30-day tent meeting, I said, Lord, 30 days. Time. Now, I've been in tent meetings before, and I've had a week or two meetings in different places and all that. 30 days every day and every, every night every, is a long time. And uh, I said, okay, well, you know, okay, we'll do it. And as we as we studied uh, to what it was going to cost us, I would, we brought in, remember, Brother Trent helped me preach. I think we figured it up. I think Trent preached 11 times during that time, and I preached 12 or something like that, or it was back and forth. I don't know which way it was. And then... Jamie Wolf from Iowa, remember he preached six times for us. Lenny uh, Power from Iowa preached twice for us. 
and he had to go back. That's why I, he wanted to stay. He really did. And then remember Rick uh, a Shooter across town preached twice for us. And Bud, I think, preached once. And, and so we got all that solved, did all that. But in order for us to do all that, we figured up the cost of it. You know, the Bible says count the cost. Yeah. You know, you got to count the cost before you do something sometimes. So I'm counting the cost. I'm thinking, Lord, it's going to be $1,600 just for the tent. $1,600 that we don't have in the bank right now. We're not, well, I think we might have had $100 or $200 in the bank church. And probably more in our account. <laughs> anyway, we had we had that much. And I said, Lord, it's going to take, I figured it all up, what we're going to have to pay these people. Because at the time, I planned to bring also a brother from Texas. And, and that's another story, but that him and his wife ended up with COVID down in Texas. Didn't get it coming. And he actually had a 39-year-old daughter that died with the COVID down in Texas, 39 years old. He lost his daughter. She went to heaven. She was a born-again believer. He didn't see that for them, though. But anyway, I said, Lord, it's going to cost $4,000, and we, we don't have that kind of money. So remember the church, for we was taking up offerings for, what, was we doing that weekly for a while? Yeah, we were doing that yeah. weekly. We were taking up offerings for the tent meeting. What came about, I think, a, a week or two before we had to have the meeting money, we had like 3400 or whatever it was, and, and we're still short. We didn't have 4000 So that week, remember, I went out to the mailbox out here, and there was a $500 check in the mail for that, and it said, for tent crusade. I said, well, praise God, we're close. And then I found a $50 check that I had forgotten to cash for the church. It was for the church. Cash that check, and that put us $4,008. So we're over the over the hump, you know. So God provided, okay? So yeah, I'm paying people. We, You know, when people come in, listen, I've been an evangelist before, pastor, and, and, and traveled for churches, and I'd go to a big church and get a little offering. I'd go to a little church to get a big offering. The little churches seem to care. So I, I've always had a heart for people coming in to speak. I try to do good by them. And uh, so we're paying people good as we can. We're paying. So at the, I want to tell, told you all that to tell you this because we can rejoice. All of you that heard the story, you can rejoice again with me because it's worth another praise time. Amen. 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 When we got done with everything, Brother Rudy, we had like $4,150. At the end of it, after we paid everybody, after we paid everything, we had still had over four thousand dollars that we was able to put in the bank. God provided, and then some. Yeah. 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 Now, wasn't that a beautiful thing? Yeah. That's that's the way God will cause us to prosper. You know, uh, when you do it God's way, He will prosper you. Now, back to the scripture: "Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly." How many of you have to be careful who you walk with? Amen. Yes. Amen. The Bible says bad company corrupts good manners. Right. Right. Amen. You better watch who you walk with. Yep. As a child of God, um, he said, who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. How many of the ungodly will try to get you to do things wrong? Amen. Amen. That's counsel. No matter if they say anything, that's counsel. No matter where it comes from, if they say Let's go out and get blowed out tonight. And let's have a party all night long. And go to, oh, that's, that's, that's advice from that person, the ungodly. We're not going there. Nor stands in the path of sinners. You just don't get in the same groove as sinners. That's lost people. That's why you have to choose your friend. And, and you know, uh, and you know, and I've said this a few times, you choose your friends, but you're stuck with your relatives, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that's what some of your relatives are saying about you? <laughs> And they probably help me. I'm sure they are. I say, well, you're blessed to have me, folks. Now, not all of them agree with that, but I tell them anyway. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, who, who sits in the seat of the scornful. Who's the scornful? That's people with a sour outlook. Just doom and gloom and no joy. Just everything's dark and terrible, you know. It's bad, but it's going to get worse. We got bees. Oh, we are. We'll be all right. The bee comes close to you, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you won't even find the home, right? <laughs> Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That's those sour, great people. You ever be around somebody like that? It's hard to be around. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you've got to make that a short conversation. Sometimes you have to say, adios. You know, goodbye. I'm out of here. I can't deal with that. 
And you don't have to get out and cuss them out. Don't, as a Christian, you certainly don't cuss anyway, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Got a few amens. Somebody saying, hold me under the breath. <laughs> but deli his delight, the, the, the person that doesn't walk that way with the ungodly, his delight is in the law of the Lord. How do I find out the law of the Lord? I read His Word. Amen. I find out what God has to say. I say, Lord, this is good stuff. If I do this, you're going to do that. If I walk holy, you're going to, you're going to cause me to go to heaven one day? Oh, yes. Amen. You're going to cause me to be blessed? Amen. Yes. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in His law, this is the way you get there, folks. This is how you prosper. In His law, God's Word, you meditate day and night. I don't mean just look at it once in a while. Hello. Oh, it's church time. i got to get my Bible out. Get the dust off of it a little bit. Carry it on out in there. No! Day and night, look it up. Check it out. See what God has to say about your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Meditate day and night. You know, to meditate is not just to read. In fact, the word meditate uh, has a connotation of murmuring or chewing the, the word and speaking it. Letting it roll over in your spirit, in your mind. And... Meditate day and night. Now this person is going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know a willow tree loves water. They just I want to tell you what, you plant a willow tree too close to certain things. It, it, years ago they used to have the wrong kind of, of drainage pipes and, and you know when they used to use the old clay tile. If you had a willow tree close by, it's going to be down in that tile one of these days causing you problems. I'm, I'm so glad they, they, they got away from some of that tile, praise God. And, uh, and uh, I can remember when that changed at our house years ago. It was a good day. But a willow tree will run for a long time to find water, the roots. And did you know, you'll be like a tree, and I like to make it like a willow tree. You'll be thirsty for God's water. The water of life, those springs of living water that comes out of the Word of God. And, and, and your roots will run deep into the Word of God if you meditate day and night on it. You're going to be like a tree planted by the water. The water of life. That brings forth its fruit in due season. In season. Whose leaf shall not wither. That means you're not going to just be decrepit. And whatever he or she, as a person, whatever he does shall prosper. Say prosper. prosper. Now if you ain't prospering, change directions somewhat. It, 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 is, is God true? And every man else, everybody else could be a liar, but God's word is true. Amen. So prosperity comes from serving the Lord, the way I read it. Amen. Hello? Amen. I, I believe Amen. that the closer we get to God, now we're not necessarily going to all be millionaires or billionaires, although that'd be all right. You know, if he can't trust you with it, he ain't going to give it to you anyway. Amen. You know. But if he can trust, you know, he gives you what he can trust you with. Yes, amen. But uh, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Whatever you do shall prosper. And you look at your life and say, look, is there room for prosperity in, in my life? And I tell the Lord yesterday, I said, Lord, there's room for a little more prosperity in our house. I said, Lord, lay it on us. I said, I'm going to meditate day and night in your word. You said in your word, what, whatever, whatever I do is going to cause me to prosper. And I can feel just money coming into our account. I'm, Romans 4.17 says, calling those things that are not as though they were. Amen. Amen. I'm saying money cometh. Amen. 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 I, I can do that. Somebody says, is that greed? No. It's to meet the need. And then, did you know, as Christians pray about that, it's not only for our needs that we, we can bless other people. Amen. Yes, amen. You, can, you can give to the poor. You, 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 can, uh, you can bless people with money. How I many knows it's better to give than to receive? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Better to give, Jesus said, than receive. Right. I like to be a giver, don't you? Amen. Now, I remember I've talked about this many times. There's two types of people in our world, especially in America. There's the givers and the, and the grabbers. All right. <laughs> this town is notorious about grabbers. This hell is where we live. There's a lot of grabbers in this town. But also at the same time, there's a lot of givers in this town. Amen. Amen. I thank Amen. the Lord for that. And I've decided to be one of those givers. I don't want to be a, a grabber. I want to give 
and be a blessing to somebody. Help people. Will you decide to prosper? If you decide to prosper, you start activating Psalm 1 here. You start incorporating this within your life. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, he delights in it, in the law of the Lord. And his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Say prosper. 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 Turn to Joshua chapter 1. Way back here. Joshua, Judges. If you go to Judges, you've missed Joshua. Back there. Go toward Don't go to Deuteronomy. Yeah. If you go to Deuteronomy, you've missed Joshua. Joshua. Book of Joshua. Mm -hmm. Now remember, Joshua was a great leader of the Israelites. Remember, he was one of Moses' uh, captains and, and as he followed Moses' direction and followed God that he pro was promoted to finally being general when Moses left planet earth Joshua took over as leadership of the children of Israel the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 Look, notice this well we're going back up to oh my goodness verse 6 we'll start there He's telling him, as he was with Moses, he says, Be strong and of good courage, for this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to your fathers to give him. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Woo! Hello! Amen. 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 Phew, Lord have mercy. That's what Jesus is talking about. Jesus remembered what was said back in the Old Testament. How many knows he was there when it was said? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So he's, he's reminding us that to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water uh, and we're going to, whatever we do shall prosper. Uh, and he told us to uh, which walk in a straight and narrow way. You're walking on the road, right road today, or you're walking on the road to destruction. You know, there's two roads. We make those choices. You know, God, God is not a, a dictator where he, he just like uses us like a, uh, we're puppets. And he, he just, no, he gives us a free will. We are free moral agents. We have a free will. We can choose to serve God and live for God or just not and live for the devil. Amen. Because no man, the Bible says, shall serve two masters. You'll either hang on to one and hate the other or vice versa. Yes. Amen. Yeah. How many of those are God haters in the world? Amen. 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 Lots of them. But did you know, at the same time, there's a lot of God lovers. I'm one of those, aren't you? Amen. Yeah. Aren't you glad you can be counted as one of those? Amen. I'm telling you, it's so good to be on your way to heaven and not on your way to hell. I've been on that other road before, way back in the day. Yeah. Man, it's good to be saved. Amen. Glory to God. That's a black, dark, terrible memory of the past. I just, You know, that's why the, the, the apostle, our brother Paul, said, Forgetting those things that are behind. Mm -hmm. I press toward the mark of the calling of God in Christ Jesus. Some of your past, you need to forget it. And when the devil reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. Amen? Yeah. Amen. He's going to go to the bottomless pit, to hell, and then eventually to the lake of fire. Right. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad that you're forgiven of your past? Amen. Amen. It's over with. Glory to God. Amen. Now, when God sees the child of God, He sees us through the, the shed blood of Jesus. He sees us, we're forgiven. He sees us from the pure, unadulterated, un, unvarnished, unmarked blood of Jesus. Perfect. Perfect in the sight of God. We're still imperfect in the sight of people, huh? <laughs> yeah, people will find your imperfections. 
And they'll say, well, then, you know, what about this and what about that? I wasn't going to do this, but I'm, I'm just going to for a minute. I was going to go to. It just kind of struck a nerve with me. I want to read something here from the Word of the Lord. Turn over to Psalm 39 for a moment. We'll get back to prosperity and all the goodness of God here in a moment. But we've got to touch on this one for a minute. Hallelujah. I, I really, this is kind of a combination. This is smorgasbord. God's smorgasbord this morning. Why well, get you something to eat in your spirit and take it home with you? <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 39. Verse 1. I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth. We talked about a muzzle Wednesday night. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know the end that is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. How many knows we're frail human beings? Amen. Indeed, I have made my days a hand breath. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about the breath of a hand, the width of it, the breath of a hand. And my age is as nothing before you. How many knows if you live to be 200 years old, that's nothing to God? Because right. He's yeah. eternal. Certainly, every man at his best is at his best state is but a vapor. Now, if, if, if you're looking at the King James, it says that out of the side of that, Salah. That could be meditate on that a while. Think on that. Think on what he's just saying there. And he says Salah because he wants you to remember every man at his best state is but a vapor. We're just here for a while. You know, the Bible says that, and James says that we're like a vapor that appears for a while and vanishes away. You remember, you ever, how many remember the old tea killer we used to put on the stove, you know, and you yeah. see it, just steam, see the steam coming out of that thing? And as soon as you turn the heat off, steam would go away. Notice that? Mm -hmm. That steam was just like a paper, wasn't it? It was here for a moment, but then as soon as it got off of the heat, it, it turned away. It vanished. That's where our life really is. Our life is but a paper. It appears for a while. We're here for a while, then we vanish away. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather. Some people just gather up a bunch of money and don't know who's going to get it in the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, they think this and then that one will get it, but not necessarily. And now, oh Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. How many knows your hope is in the Lord? Yes, yes. Deliver me from all my transgressions. That's all you see. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. Now, we're going to stop there. Well, no, when with rebukes you correct me for iniquity. You make his beauty melt away like a mole. Surely every man is a vapor. Okay, we're going to stop right there. And we're, you see Salah is right there on the end of that verse too. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. How many knows your life is like a vapor? You need to make the most of what you're here. Amen. Amen. You know, make the most of it. Everybody likes to leave their mark. You know, we talked about that, and I was hearing a report not long ago, um, you know, back in uh, um, the day that, and, uh, do you know that's why we put markers on graves? So they'll be remembered, you know. We put them out there, we can go visit the graves and all that, and we see. Um, but we want to be remembered, not just on a tombstone, but did you know the memory of your life will go on whether it's good or bad. Amen. Yes, it will. Now, the Bible says this. Beware when all men speak well of you. I've never had to worry about that, Rudy. <laughs> they, they do. I, 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 don't, I don't sweat the small stuff on that one. Because <laughs> not everybody's going to speak well of you. Well, I just want God to know and speak well of me. Amen. Yes. 
And, and anyway, he says, too, when a man's ways please him, it make even our enemies be at peace with us. So, you know, they got a problem. They have to think it up with God. You know, people that don't like you because you're a Christian, they're going to have to deal with God over that. Amen. Right. You know, All good. Just turn the other cheek and go the other way sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to run from people. Amen. Now, whatsoever he does will prosper day and night. I want to go back to Psalm 23. Let's go to Psalm 23 now for a minute. Don't you like the 23rd Psalm? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Now, this 23rd Psalm is, you know, you hear it at funerals a lot. But it's, it's not a, a it's not something to to die by necessarily. It's something to live by. Right. Amen. Now, who's your shepherd? Who's guarding your life? Who's guiding, and directing your life? Which road are you traveling on? If you're traveling on the Lord's side, Psalm 23 says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." That means want things, stuff. I I don't have to you. Know, he said, the Lord says, the Lord thy God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. What road are you traveling on? Are you walking uprightly? God says, you shall not want things. He's not against us. Well, I talked about this a lot. He's not against you having things, but he's against things having you. That's right. He's not against you having money, but he's against money having you. Right. He makes... Me to lie down in green pastures. I want to tell you what. If you take a, a, a young calf out to the pasture, you know, lead it out there, and they get in some green stuff, and you just and then well, they just go just getting that head down to the ground and really enjoy green pastures because it's fresh and it's good and nourishing to that person or that animal in that case. He lead me beside still waters. How I many knows the Bible? You know. The, Still waters, you know, the, the common saying is still waters run deep. Mm -hmm. I know people use that about people's attitudes, you know, they run deep, you know. But it leads me beside still waters. That's fresh water. Cool, refreshing. It restores my soul. How I many knows to have your soul restored is wonderful? Oh, amen. amen. The, your soul part, you see, you're made up of three parts. You have a body you live in, right? You have a soul, and you also have a spirit. Now, your spirit is to control everything. But people that live by their body will get in trouble day after day after day after day after day. People that live by their soul will get in trouble day after day after day after day. Because your soul is the seat of all of your emotions. You're, if you're moved by this or that, and your soul, you're, you're, you get emotional over this, you go, I better go this way because my, I feel this way. Well, just like Brother Bud said today, I feel blue. Well, he's, been, he's letting his soul lead him. I love him, but I'll tell him that very thing. I told him to come sing victory in Jesus with us. Amen. Amen. If you go to feeling blue, that's your soul trying to lead you. You've got to resist that and say, look, the Spirit of God's in my spirit. I'm a child of God. I'm not going to be moved by my soul and my emotions because it's trying to tell me that I feel this way. I'm going to take control with my spirit being. My spirit man. Led of the spirit. Let your spirit take charge of your life. Amen. If you're a Christian, that is. If you're not, the devil lives in your spirit. Amen. If you're not saved, that's just it. Now, when your spirit is leading you and you're a child of God, you'll be, you'll be make wise choices. You want to follow God's commands. You want to hide his word in your heart that you might not sin against God. Hello? Amen. Amen. How do I hide my, his word in my heart? I studied to show myself approved a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Did you know if you don't study, you'll wrongly divide it? Yeah. Amen. You know, we got a lot of preachers that are wrongly dividing the word of God today. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about a famine in the last days. Not a famine for bread, uh, but a famine for the word of God. Now, we've got more churches across America and around the world than we've ever had. But there's still a famine for the true word of God. Because yeah, preachers are, they said that in the last days, people will call in teachers that have itching ears, and they'll be men pleasers. Yeah, you know, you're okay, I'm okay. We're all good, we're all just wonderful. Uh, you ever read your obituaries all the time? It seems like everybody in your obituaries go to heaven. I mean, I know not everybody. Now, I know there's some that do. But not everybody who read your obituaries make it to heaven. But in, in, in those obituaries, I read them all the time. Says, well, he went to be with his Lord. 
I might have known some of them people. And I've known their lifestyle. And I said, well, when I say God, right with God at the very last minute, I don't know. I hope they made it. I always have the, I hope the best for people. How many of us we ought to hope the best for people? Amen. We ought to think the best of people. Well, you know, but the devil wants us sometimes to have uh, thoughts of evil and not of good. But we ought to just give people a, a break. Hello? Amen. Now, we can't agree with sin, right? Amen. We can't agree with sin. But we, the Bible says, agree with your adversary while he's in the way. Just, okay, I, God bless you. Go on. Get out of this way then. Which road are you traveling today? There's a highway. The Bible speaks of a highway of holiness. Yeah. And then without holiness, the Bible says, no man or woman shall see the Lord. That's right. In fact, God says, be you holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. Amen. Well, how do I become holy? By receiving His love, His grace, by obeying His word, walking in truth, walking in righteousness, Becoming the righteousness of God. Becoming who He says you can become. Becoming that prosperous Christian. Becoming that person that whatever you do prospers in because you're meditating upon His Word day and night. Saying, oh God, I love you Lord. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to read your Word. I'm going to study your Word. I'm going to show up. I'm going to please you and not myself, not my own soul or my body. But my spirit says, love God with all my heart. and all. I have no other God before me. I'm going to put you first. I'm going to say, say first. First. That's where God wants in your life. First place. Yes, amen. Amen. You know, God is such a wonderful God, but he won't play second fiddle to anybody. Right. right. Now, he's going to be number one. I've told all my children. I tell my wife. I love her. I tell them all. I, my grandchildren. I said, I love all of you people. I love you so much. I love my wife, Jan, so much. I just love her to pieces. Bless you. But I tell her, I said, dear, dear one, as much as I love you, I love Jesus more. Amen. I love God more. And she knows Amen. that. And, and it's same with her with me. And that's the way it should be, church. Amen. Now, if your husband and wife don't get that, they're not, they're not right yet. they got to get it. they got to get that. Did you know sometimes, I've seen this happen. I've seen a, I've seen a couple uh, come before, you know, and one gets saved and the other one don't. And because that woman or that man, whichever it might be, I've seen it both ways. Whichever one it might be, they start just so in love with Jesus, so in love with God. All of a sudden, the, the mate gets jealous yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They ball and squall and get all bent out of shape. Get their feathers all ruffled. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you love Why are you going to church again for now? I'm saying, why? why don't you come and go with me, man? Why don't you come and go with me, woman? Why don't you follow the Lord with me? Yeah. Amen. You love God more than me? Hmm. That's a pretty easy thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just, and eventually people find it. If you're, say committed to Christ. Committed, committed to Christ. Christ. Did you know God's looking for committed people? Yeah. Did you know that the hardest things for, mm. to find nowadays is yes, people that's really committed to this word, Amen. really committed to loving God and putting him first? Hard to find now, every once in a while, we find somebody like that. Oh, we rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise God. It makes me talk in tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, speaking of that, tomorrow, our new Supreme Court judge is going to get to voted on. Yeah, she'll be she'll be Supreme Court judge come Tuesday, Lord, Lord Derek. All them cases that she's dealing with, she's going to be praying in tongues over them. You know she's baptizing the Holy Ghost, yeah. speaks in other tongues. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's full of the Holy Ghost. God just promoted her. Psh, I'm glad for it. Yeah, amen. Oh, amen. Boy, I tell you what. Righteousness, the Bible says, exalts a nation. Yeah. But sin is a reproach to any people. Right. Amen. 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 I'm telling you what. There's a big division in our country, isn't it? Mm. On, on righteousness and, and evil and unrighteousness. Praise God. He, lead, he restores my soul, leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear all evil. No. 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 Is that what it says? No. What's it say? No. What, what's it say? 
No evil. No evil. I will fear no evil. Is this virus from God? No. No. The Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. He's the one that brings the junk on the world. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm coming that you might have life. You might have more abundant. So listen, I'm not going to fear. I don't want it. I don't want you to have it. I don't believe we will. I'm not going to fear COVID. I'm not going to fear what they say on television 30,000 times a day. I'm telling you what, somebody that watches that junk enough, they're going to be just biting their fingernails off right up to their elbows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, that's that's chewing on me. <laughs> but did you know? But did you know that that uh, bless God, that the devil's crowd tries to bring fear on our whole land. Yeah. Yep. Jesus said, "I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Love and of power and of a sound mind." Amen. Oh, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. God's with you, folks. We don't have to worry. Yeah. Yeah. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Bless God. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. I find comfort in the word of the Lord. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He just takes care of us even though the enemies are all around. Yeah. And they can't touch Amen. us. Glory to God. Good. There may be envious of all of those good things we eat. We ain't good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. You anoint my head with oil. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Anoints our head with oil. Then he says, My cup runs over. Yeah. I mean, you know, people say, is, you, you look at the glass half full of oil. My mind's running over. My cup running over. Every child of God that trust, put the trust in God, your cup should be running over. Amen. <laughs> Remember we sing that little song? Running over, running over. My cup is full and running over. Since the Lord saved me. I'm as happy as can be. My cup is full and running over. Yeah, your cup should be running over with the goodness of God, the blessing of the Lord. We sing that old song, little song. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the basket and I'm blessed in the store. And you there you better need to be too when you go to the store. Abraham's blessings are mine. Praise God. Wow. Man, God's good. Amen. Amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my hand. You know my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness yes. and mercy shall follow me. What's on your trail? What's on your road following you? Is goodness and mercy following you? If you're, if you're upright with God, there, there's the twins of the love of God coming down the road right in back of you. Goodness and mercy Amen. following you around. And it'll just overtake you if you need to be. All the days of my life, every day of your life, goodness and mercy is all around following you. And I, that later on then, I will dwell in the house of the Lord for a short time. Oh, forever is what it says in it. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy in this life. I mean, Christians get to have our cake and eat it too. I mean, dear God, we, I mean, we get the whole enchilada. I mean, we're, we're blessed with the Lord, presence and God's Amen. goodness. Goodness and mercy Follow us all the days of my life. <sighs> Ain't it good? Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel bad for the lost people. I feel bad for them. I feel, I feel bad for them. Yeah. I want to reach all of them I can because there's fear following them. There's tragedy trying to overtake them. There's sickness, disease, and hell awaits them unless they come to Christ. Amen. That's why we are to go to all of our world. Where's your world? Oh, we just found out a brother and, and, and sister uh, Ramona has a, a cousin Michael in Af Africa. They've been over somewhere in Africa. We've been over there preaching for 25 years. We're going to have to locate him and find out. Well, we might go over and see him one of these days. Who knows? He's got a church over there. We'll go over and have, have a meeting together. Amen. Wow. But we didn't, we didn't realize until last night we got to tell him. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. How many wants goodness and mercy to follow you today? Amen. You want that? You want that in your life? Amen. Well, just keep on keeping on. That's all I can say. Amen. Just keep on keeping on. Stay committed to God. Trust in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
He'd give you the desires of your heart. Looks like you two got that here a while back. They're sitting here married today. Amen. We had a wedding here a here while back, right there. Hallelujah. Give you the desires of your heart. I don't know who's I don't know whose wedding it was. Might have been yours. Sunrise. I was talking to a lady in the other room over there. I said, well, now, you know, if you come to our church and, and you're unmarried, you know, they get married after a while at our church. That woman said, I ain't coming to your church. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she told me. <laughs> oh, I tell you what. She said, I've been there, done that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But we've had a few weddings along the way. It's always good to have that happen. Yeah. Amen. When it's when it's in the will of God. Yeah. Amen. Which road are you living on now? Now is the day of salvation. Today is accepted time. This is the day of salvation. This is time to, to turn over your life totally to the Lord. I, as I look around, I think, how many saved in the house today? You know you're saved? Stay saved, all right? You got to stay committed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on, Trent, I know you're not feeling well. We're going to pray for you before you come up here. Come on up here and stand right here. I'm going to pray for you. Trent's been feeling bad. He usually plays the keyboard and sings and plays the drum for us. He's had a rough day. Oh, pray for Trent, everybody. Yes, Lord. Father, lay your healing hand upon Trent. You're warm, too, brother. Father, lay your healing hand upon Trent right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, take away that temperature, Lord. Deliver him from any sickness or disease. Set him free! In the mighty name of Jesus, heal our brother. God, he's your child. He's your man today, God, in North October. I'm anointing God, heal his body. We drive out sickness. We drive out sickness in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now that you're healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we expect people to get healed when we pray for them, don't Amen. we? Amen. 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 Stand with us, everybody. Let's sing power in the blood. There is power, power, power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, one working in the precious blood of the Lamb. I said there's power, power. recovery for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I call the doctors to be amazed at how well he's going to walk and how good it is and how soon it's going to be, Father. We speak health and healing to that leg and his body. God bless him, Lord, and all that he's about him. And bless Lucy today, Father, visiting with us. We're so glad. Father, we're glad for every friend that's come to the house of God today. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us today. Help us to, to stay in a right relationship with you, Father. Oh, God, so that you can cause everything that we touch to prosper. Father, prosper the church. Lord, give wisdom where wisdom is needed. Give guidance and direction where that's needed. We give you praise in Jesus. Let's sing one more song, Trent. Jesus on the main line. Well, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Well, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, salvation. Well, if you want salvation, tell him what you want. If you want salvation, tell him what you want. If you want salvation, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Well, if you want.
want your healing, tell him what you want. If you want your healing, tell him what you want. If you want your healing, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main, the Holy Ghost. Well, if you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. One more time, we're going to close up. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Lift your voice and close us in prayer. Would you do that? Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for the day. Thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence yes, today, Lord. I just pray that you'll let the word that went forth today penetrate our hearts, yes, God. Let us take it home with us, Lord. Apply it to our lives. God, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise for all of it today, Lord. In Jesus' Amen. name, amen. 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 Thank you for watching this video that was brought to you by Joy Christian Ministries. If you're ever in the area, Come experience God with us. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. And our address can be found at the bottom of this screen. Thank you for your support. We love you. God bless you.